Hi, everyone, and thanks for checking out this movie review. So today we'll be continuing with my current horror franchise, and that is Friday the 13th. Uh, we're up to the fourth movie in the franchise, which is Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Uh, right here on the on the eight-disc box set that I have. Here. So yeah, Friday the 13th, the final chapter. I'll just kind of go through my premise, the premise and the setup of the movie, and then I'll get into my... Thoughts and review, which uh, will contain spoilers. So, so Friday the 13th, the final chapter is a 1984 American slasher film directed by Joseph Zito, produced by Frank Mancuso Jr. And the movie star is Corey Feldman as Tommy Jarvis, Kimberly Beck as Trish Jarvis, E. Eric Anderson as Rob Dyer, Barbara Howard as Sarah, Joan Freeman as Tracy Jarvis, Peter Barton as Dog, Crispin Glover as Jimmy, and Julie or Judy. Arnson as Samantha. Um, fourth installment in the Friday the 13th franchise. It picks up immediately, like the last couple of movies has, picks up immediately um, after the events of part three. The plot follows a presumed dead Jason Voorhees, who escapes from the morgue and returns to Crystal Lake to continue his killing spree. Uh, the film marks the debut of the character of Tommy Jarvis, who's played by Corey Feldman in this movie. Who would make for and he'll make further appearances in the next two sequels, establishing him as Jason's arch enemy. Uh, so we begin the night after the events at Higgins Haven from part three. Police clean up the grounds, and Jason Voorhees' body is believed was believed to be dead is taken to the morgue. At the hospital, Jason spontaneously revives and escapes from the cold storage. Murdering the coroner Alex Burns and with a hacksaw and getting nurse Robbie Morgan with a scalpel. Or gutting, I should say. <laughs> gutting uh, nurse Robbie Morgan with a scalpel. The following day, a group of teenagers drive to Crystal Lake for the weekend. The group consists of Paul, his girlfriend Sam, Virgin Sarah, her boyfriend Doug, Awkward Jimmy, and Jokester Ted. On the way, the group comes across Pamela Voorhees' tombstone and a hitchhiker who is soon killed by Jason. So um, that's basically the, the beginning, the setup of it. Um, obviously, Jason's back. They thought he was dead. He's still alive um, back at Crystal Lake. And with these teenagers arriving, you can probably guess what uh, what happens uh, during this movie. I'll try to fix my lighting a little bit there. No, that's a little better, I think. Um, so yeah, as far as this movie goes and my thoughts about it, um, again, I hadn't seen this movie for a long time, Friday the, Friday the 13th, the final chapter from 1984. Um, I have to say it's really good, um, for a lot of reasons, which I'll go through here with my pros. Um, I feel like this is the most like mainstream Friday the 13th movie so far. Like the first three sort of bordered on like, uh, B horror movies, B movie horror comedies to a certain extent. This one feels like a, an actual theatrically released um, Hollywood uh, slasher movie. Um, I don't necessarily know that the budget was a lot higher on it, but it just has more of a it just has more of a mainstream feel to it. So we'll start out with my pros and, and speaking on that the, the great atmosphere in this movie. You know, the third movie. I talked about was kind of lit up a little bit. It was during the day a lot of it, and I thought that took away a little bit from the from sort of the suspense of the movie. This movie's back to being very dark. Um, I think it's the darkest and most claustrophobic in terms of most of the movie taking place in the dark or at night. The claustrophobic part, so that had, this is the first movie in this franchise. It's just had this feeling where it all takes place at Crystal Lake. There is no town. There's no like. It just feels very claustrophobic, which definitely drives up the suspense and the scares in this movie. Um, once again, great Jason in this movie. Maybe the best Jason, this time played by Ted White. Richard Brooker was a great Jason in part three. This this Jason might be even better, certainly just as good. Ted White does a great job. He's very brutal with his kills, very menacing in this movie. Just a great, great portrayal of Jason. Uh, but really makes this movie better than the previous three, especially one and three. Two kind of had some of this, but this this movie by far has the best characters. Um, like the teenage characters, the older characters are all memorable. They all have their own quirks. They're entertaining. They're 
you can tell that, that they spent more time writing these characters instead of just throwing out the jock and the the virgin and the you know the awkward kid and even though we have some of that in this movie but the, the way the characters are acted as well as the way they're written they're, they're memorable they're the characters have much more staying power in this movie you actually care about them uh when they're killed to a certain extent so yeah definitely a, a jump up a step up with characters um aside from jason i got to talk about Corey feldman who's very young in this movie plays Tommy Jarvis, the first of three portrayals of this character, Tommy Jarvis. Um, he gives a really good performance, especially as a kid actor. I'm not sure how old he is in this movie. I'm guessing probably around 12 or so. Um, but but yeah, he introduces, this character is really introduced well. He portrays it well, especially at the end when he goes, when he goes ape shit and shaves his head and starts chopping at Jason and saying, die, 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 over and over again. Um, yeah, just very believable, very good performance by Corey Feldman in that character. Um, great kills. I, I think that this movie is, has the best kills so far, the first four. Very brutal, very violent and gory. They don't hack up the... They actually show the gore in the movie, unlike some of the previous movies. It's not as hacked up by the MPAA as some of the previous movies were. Um, yeah, the kills are creative. They're great. They're Like I said, just Jason's kills are brutal in this movie, and it definitely adds to the suspense. Um, this movie it just has a great tone to it. Um, unlike some of the other movies, it's more dark and serious. I mean, there is humor in this movie. I'm not sure all of it was intentional. Uh, by the director and the producer and the writers, but th there's definitely humor in this movie. It's not a hopeless movie, but it's definitely, they didn't make this movie to be a comedy or to be sort of like a, a cheesy, campy comedy. This is this is probably the less cheesy of the, of the first four films so far. Very dark and serious tone. Um, not quite as a B-horror movie or B-horror comedy as some of the others, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so that's definitely a plus in my book. Um, the movie's actually scary. You know, the first three movies had suspense to them, especially with the POV shots in the first couple. But this movie's actually is actually damn right scary. I mean, you can watch it at night with all the lights off, and I mean, Jason's actually scary in this movie, not just suspenseful like the other movies were. But it's but it's actually there's actually scary parts to this movie, and. Um, so that's awesome. Awesome practical effects with the, the return of Tom Savini in this movie. Um, you can tell he returns. Just great, great gore effects, great practical effects throughout this movie. Once again, great music and a great score that helps ratchet up the tension. you got to talk about Crispin Glover in this movie. Um, I actually think he's a really good actor. I know he's kind of weird and messed up in real life, or at least no, I shouldn't say messed up, but he's he's just kind of quirky and weird in real life and turns a lot of people off. But the movies that I've seen him and he's really good. And this movie with the whole dance scene that he does is great. And just the way he plays the awkwardness of his character. I mean, he, maybe he's like that in real life, so it wasn't too big of a stretch. But he was definitely one of the best characters in a movie that had a lot of good characters and the the big the biggest pro or the last pro is the fact there's no dream sequence at the end of this movie. Yeah, <laughs> the first three movies, of course, did the whole dream sequence at the end and copied basically copied the previous film and doing it. They don't do this in this movie, although I guess I read that they were planning on it and they scrapped it. Thank God. Um, I'm even not as bothered by the sort of at the beginning of the movie when they sort of rehash what's happened before. I think they execute that better than the previous three movies where they kind of go through how how we got here, basically, um, where they use, um, I can't think of his name, the guy from part two, uh, Paul, is it? Yeah. Um, where he's talking around the campfire about Jason, and then they show different scenes with, when he's talking. I actually didn't mind that as much as the previous three films where they rehashed the previous movie. So um, as far as cons, there's not a lot. I do have a couple. Um, the biggest one being that it's kind of the same old Friday formula. Teenagers show up on a weekend at Camp Crystal Lake and Jason kills them. I mean, there's there's really nothing creative or or mind blowing about how they come, how they all come to this place. I mean, you know, like I said, the characters are better, but the story to get them there is basically the same formula. No originality there. 
Um, there continues to be continuity issues, especially with parts two, three, and this one. Where, I mean, if you if you go by each movie, there's a, basically they take place within three days of each other, or at least the same week. And in this movie, we're introduced to Rob, who has these clippings. Um, or actually, he doesn't have the clippings, but where he talks about he had a sister in part two that was killed. Well, Jesus, that guy really. Part two was two or three days ago, or most a week ago, according to these movies. So, yeah, there's just some. I don't think this franchise cares a whole hell of a lot about continuity. <laughs> you know, um, that's one thing I think I realized with these first four movies. So, the, you know, the newspaper clippings that Tom Tommy Jarvis runs into, and the whole backstory with Rob's sister, those are just some kind of continuity issues. Um, at least with parts two, three, and this one. I don't. Speaking of Rob, I don't think his character was great. You know, they kind of introduce him in this movie. He's going to be a badass and finally take Jason out. And uh, he really doesn't do much. You know, he has this tent in the woods and this machete. and But he ends up getting killed. And he's not very well acted. I mean, in the part in the basement where he's like, he's killing me. He's killing me. Run. He's killing me. I mean, it's totally overacted and just silly dialogue. Um, so that character, why well, wasn't crazy about and then uh, my last, it's not really a con, but what the hell was with Jason's black fingernails or his black fingers or hands in this movie? Um, is it is it because he's supposed to be have been under the water for so long that his skin, his fingers are turning black? I mean, I just don't know where that came from. I don't remember that. If I forgot about it in the last movie, point it out in the comments. But yeah, overall, though, guys, there's not really a lot of cons about this movie. This is... This is definitely a great Friday the 13th movie, a great slasher movie, a great Jason movie. The best of the series so far being four movies in. I know we have eight to go, uh, but I can see why why people praise this one. They have it as their favorite or near the top of their favorites. Um, I have a feeling I will as well. I'm going to give this movie a 9 out of 10 as far as my rating goes. Nine, 9 out of 10. Just very solid, very solid Jason, very solid character. Really good kills and really good atmosphere. It's kind of got everything you want in a Friday the 13th movie, to be honest with you. So that's my rating, guys, 9 out of 10. Go ahead and give me your comments down below and tell me what you thought of this movie, um, what you liked about it, what you didn't. Please like this video. Subscribe to my channel to see future Friday the 13th uh, movie reviews, as well as my ranking for all the movies at the end of the month and other reviews that I'll do on standalone movies. So thank you for watching this video. Have a great day. Bye.